what if we're not alone in the universe? So I am at the the Thang Museum here in Arizona. And I was like, there's no way I could like drive past this thing and not stop. It's only five dollars. It's only five dollars. So make sure you come in. I'm gonna wait till we have somebody in here with me. Maybe I should make myself look presentable. Whatever that means. Oh wow, we were just talking about the truth the other day and what the truth was. And they're like, but people can twist the truth. And I was like, then that's not the truth. Hi, whoever is in here. I'm at the Thang Museum. You know, the like as you're driving through Arizona, you start seeing all these signs for the Thang. It's only $5, so make sure you come in and check this out yourself. But they want you to take pictures and everything. So I'm like kind of super stoked to do that. This is amazing. What if? <coughs> what if we're not alone in the universe? So for those of you that just got to the channel, I am at the Museum of the Thing. Thank you, Living for Jesus. <laughs> I just met the crew, met the crew from Dr. Bronner's. They have this like rig and apparently they're gonna be shooting bubbles at an event during the eclipse. And I was just like totally like, I was like, whoa, look at that vehicle. And so I asked them about it and they ended up giving me like free samples of Dr. Bronner's. Cause I was like, what is that thing? Cause like they have containers that are like the size of me on the back of their rig. And I was like, why do you have so much Dr. Broders? Why? <laughs> Sorry, Carlos. I'm taken. <laughs> why is your arm so long? Wrap it around me, buddy. There we go. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna go see the eclipse in Texas. It's taken me over a day to get three hours away from my last destination. I think that's kind of ridiculous. But someone brought, uh, my friend bought some art. Wow, you got some good abs on you there, buddy. Someone bought some art so that I could pay for some gas. So we're gonna start walking through this museum here. And if you all wanna like come along for the journey, stay, cause I'm gonna be reading the story to you. Cause apparently this guy took some, some conspiracy theories and turned them into a museum. So I am super stoked about that. I keep forgetting it's Easter. It's so weird. I haven't celebrated holidays in so long. Happy Easter, one voter. You know, did you know the Mormons didn't believe that Jesus actually died? And so I like went back through the Bible and I started reading the story of the crucifixion. And Jesus was asking his disciples, like, did you guys actually think I died? And I was just like, wait, what's the actual story? like? I really, really, really want to know the truth of all of this. Let's start the museum tour. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. 
Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes. What if you were told that all you know about history is false? Everything you have learned in school or history, books is a fabrication devised to shelter the citizens of Earth from the truth. Throughout man's time on Earth, kingdoms, empires, and governments have tried to suppress the facts. They allowed shreds of evidence to leak in order to confuse the issue. What if you are about to learn here today is a culmination of over 50 years of research. Prepare to be amazed as we enlighten you. This is the information you have always been seeking without realizing it. Now take a journey with us back through time as we explore history and unlock the mystery of the thing. Isn't it weird that we're here on Easter Sunday? And like I'm reading this right now and I'm like, that that's just really weird that like we're here on Easter Sunday. And the Holy Bible has some amazing truths in it, but I believe there is more, a whole lot more. Aliens versus dinosaurs. Or that it is actually like, even though I know it's plastic, it's still getting my like, survival instincts kind of like freaked out you know what I mean look at these freaking claws could you imagine that's like as big as my freaking face like this thing is actually making my survival instincts kind of like weirded out like that would bite off my whole entire head in one go I want to ride a dinosaur I wonder if aliens are really that big. They did a really good job at this museum. Your black widow spider tried to call, crawl into your mouth. That's weird. What if you're about, what you're about to see is true? I like true stuff. <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys have to come here. It's only five bucks. And amazing. Like the, oh. My goodness, it's one of those things. How could you not believe in dinosaurs? They made a whole museum of them. Holy cow. That's scarier than sharks. Holy freaking cannoli, you guys. Whoa, this thing is serious. I bet the poops of this thing would have been ginormous. in Arizona on the I-10 and I started seeing signs for the thing and um so now I'm at the museum for the thing and it's definitely worth it definitely come and see this this is awesome I just think it's weird that I'm here on Easter Sunday I didn't mean to do that but I think it's weird that I'm here on Easter Sunday 
and that it's saying what if what you are about to see is the true is true i just think the correlation is really weird dinosaurs rule what if we step back in time together and explore a world as fascinating as it is mysterious. This timeline represents the Mesozoic era, which was the span of time that mighty dinosaurs ruled the planet. 65 million years ago, these gigantic beasts were wiped from the face of the earth. What happened? Today, you will witness the hidden details from that fateful period. how tiny the dinosaurs were and look how big they get like that's freaking huge holy crap what is that the claws on that are ridiculous there's no need for that I don't even think that's a t-rex I think that's one of these guys I think this is the one that was in the first one, which was terrifying. I got a video of someone touching it. Cretaceous time period. During the Cretaceous period, the breakup of the world continents continued and significant changes took place on Earth. New organisms and plant life began to flourish. Dinosaurs like the Albertor Albertosaurus and the popular Triceratops roamed the North American landscape as the great... What's this word? I mean, you can see it, but how do you say that? Terranondon? Terranondon ruled the air. Freaking cool. What if dinosaurs were ruled by aliens from another planet? 65 billion years ago. Oh, sorry. That's off. 65 million years ago. What if aliens have been here before? We believe the answer is yes. Aliens have been here before and this exhibit seeks to provide possible proof of their presence by exploring the following story. Why did they come to Earth? Their alien planet, Rothian Prime, was on the verge of dying. Two Rothian prime, Rothian clans, the powerful, my, Malzurath, Milzerath, and the Amar, Amatria were tasked with seeking a new planet in order to save their species. Thousands of scout ships were sent throughout the galaxy in search of a new home. One scouting party discovered Earth during the dawning of the age of the dinosaurs. These first Rothian extraterrestrial observers saw the advantage of using the enormous dinosaurs to build their new civilization. They made their plans to return with their entire alien population. I'm gonna cry, I don't know why. The Milzerath clan, this ruthless clan was the main governing force of the Rothian civilization. They were responsible for all security and defense, highly skilled in weapons and combat, oversaw all construction efforts on newly discovered planets, believed they alone controlled their destiny by complete domination over other species. The Emma 
Amatria clan. This gentle and curious clan was the main scientific and explora exploration group of the Rothians. They were responsible for all research and development for the entire civilization. Curious and driven by a quest for knowledge, fierce com combatants of provoked, if provoked to fight, sympathetic to any newly encountered species, and believers in an invisible greater creator of the universe. I think I fit into that one more. 500 years later, Rothian species arrive. Even the advanced technology, the ability to travel tens of thousands of light years across the galaxy was almost impossible for the Rothians. Yet against all odds, they return to Earth 500 years later with the survivors of their population. What if this is how their return looked? Wow, this is really cool. Schematics for the C4MD collective mind. Alien technology possibly created a collective mind among the species. This allowed for brilliant strategic cooperation among the ranks. Control filters down through the ranks. This gives the commander strategic control over his admir admirals. It is believed this kept subordinates from refusing orders. If the device was removed, the individual re would re regain free will. Holy crap, you guys. This won't hurt a bit. At the request of the ruthless Mil Milzerath leaders, the gentle Amari Amatria used their advanced mind control devices to gain control of the Earth's dinosaur population. Their nanotechnology was able to fuse with many dinosaur species' DNA. This forced the dinosaurs to obey commands, effectively enslaving them. For thousands of years, the aliens seemed to live successfully among the dinosaurs as their masters. However, some sympathetic Amatria em quietly disapproved of the, of the enslaved and harsh treatment of the dinosaurs. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back and look at the helmet that this, now it all makes sense, okay? He's wearing one too. Kind of makes sense. Why you see pictures of them with those on? Okay, continuing on. I don't know why, but I'm like going through like all sorts of like emotions right now. Did you guys see that fly overhead? That was scary. Schematic A27K neural control harness. Check this out. Neural sink gauge. Neural needles. The ocular connection needle for the eyeball. Neural connection attaches itself to the DNA. Schematic A4BP, neural interface helmet. Whoa. This is insane. You guys think it's true? <laughs> Look, another jackalope.
Hi, Jean Door. Did you see 8 million brown aliens recently arrived? Look at that UFO, it's blinky. What you checking out there, Brusky? Oh yeah, I wouldn't screw with that one, it's a rattler. I've actually kind of freaked out a little bit, to be honest. The schematic of a T3HW herbivore control harness. Alien saddle believed to have big, have biomagnetic properties to stop rider from being thrown from the saddle. Neurotail implant tapped into the large bundle of nerves thought to have been in the tails of some large dinosaurs. Nervous tap tapped into the internal nervous system of large species of herbivores. This link may have been used to monitor the animal's vitals. Apparently this one was incompatible. Apparently the T-Rex said nah. The unthinkable, over the vast amount of time, the dinosaurs began to reject simple commands. The manipulations of the dinosaurs' DNA created an unexpected result, giving the beast intelligence. In combination with their new intellect and the alien technology, the dinosaurs could communicate telepathically among themselves. The dinosaurs suddenly realized they were enslaved and began rejecting alien control. The gentle Amatria had become very fond of the dinosaurs they controlled. A strong attachment began to form between many of them. They tried to keep this new development a secret from the powerful Milzareth leadership. You guys, I just glitched. My vision just glitched. Like everything just went What is happening? Apparently the external power cores, they're like weapons apparently, had used a lot of energy so they had to carry a backpack battery source to charge their weapons. What if ancient petroglyphs, the mysterious cave dwellers, created ancient drawings such as these? These petroglyphs represented the cave dwellers' impressions of their history when the beings from the sky enslaved dinosaurs. As the aliens establish themselves on Earth, the curious Amatria scientists explored more intricate aspects of the planet. They discovered mysterious cave-dwelling creatures that existed safely below the surface. The harsh Miserath leadership thought these cave-dwellers were too primitive to be concerned about. However, the Amatria realized they were far from far more interesting than the gigantic dinosaurs above. The Amatria scientists sought answers to their many questions. Who were these mysterious cave dwellers? Where did they go? What happened to them? And what if they are connected to humans today? These bones were thought to be discovered in the mines of Southern Arizona. Notice the strange markings they have. What if 
This is the first evidence of some advanced technology interfacing with dinosaur DNA. And you might also notice strange burn marks. What if these dinosaurs were involved in some great battle? Pretty sparkly. Aliens versus dinosaurs. With the dinosaurs' newfound intelligence, they began to organize attacks against their alien masters. The war for domin dominion over Earth began. Many of the Amatria who were sympathetic to the dinosaurs joined their cause. A civil war broke out among the alien clans. The war raged for hundreds of years and affected Earth itself. Their weapons caused earthquakes and volcanoes to erupt on a global scale. The brutal Miserat leadership realized their clan was on the brink of losing the war. They put a dramatic plan in motion to end the war and abandon the planet. Holy crap. I almost have to look away. I know it's fake, but like, my imagination holy shit you guys look how big that is it's like it's huge Sick dinosaur. Annihilation. The evil Miserath. Miserath clan set their plan in motion. They saw that the only way to wipe out their foes and win this war was through complete annihilation. If they couldn't have the planet, no one could. That's not very nice. As the Miserath retreated back into space, they set an asteroid toward Earth. According to their calculations, the impact at the Yucatan Peninsula would create the most damage, ending all life on the planet. Or so they hoped. Aftermath. The alien versus dinosaur war left Earth in ruins. The civil war between the Rothian clan and the Miserath clan and the Amatria divided all the species. They separated into two factions and remained sworn enemies. The Miserath abandoned Earth and saw a new planet to conquer. A large continent of the peaceful Amatria faction also left Earth in hopes that they could defend their civilization from the destructive Misera conquest. Meanwhile, a small colony of the compassionate Amatria remained on Earth. They did their best to save as many native species from extinction as possible. However, their efforts were in vain. Eventually, the Amatria survivors died out before they could have a positive impact. After thousands of years, 75% of life on Earth was extinct. Though all was not lost, life would eventually be renewed.
Life is renewed. 500,000 years later, Earth made a full recovery. 500,000 years later? Five hundred thousand years later, Earth made a full recovery. The planet's continents continued to form. New life grew and flourished. From the tiniest bacteria to the largest trees, vegetation thrived. The last great extinction gave way to the development of mammals and eventually Earth's most formidable beings of all, mankind. Where did mankind begin? How did humans first appear on Earth? What if we descended from the prehistoric cave dwellers you saw earlier? Could it be? The brave Amatria faction spent thousands of years traveling across the galaxy, exploring and fighting the evil Mizarath faction. Many times they were successful in saving civilizations from the scourge of the ruthless Mizarath. Milzarath. Sadly, other times they were too late to make a difference. The wise Amatria elders inspired their faction to chart their return to Earth. Upon their arrival, they discovered that abandoned life had returned to the planet. Abundant life, sorry, had returned to the planet. Earth was filled with many new creatures and plant life. Some creatures were much like the cave dwellers from the tales of their ancestors. These creatures grouped together in many of their own tribes and built their own primitive structures for shelter. There was overwhelming evidence that these creatures is intelligence. There was overwhelming evidence of these creatures intelligence. The peaceful Amatria agreed that this planet was special. They devised a plan to protect the planet and aid these intelligent creatures they called humans. The peaceful Amatria planned to aid humanity over thousands of generations. They would work from the shadows of the utmost secrecy. The Amatria would only reveal themselves to the highest ranking officials of any tribe, clan, or civilization. They oversaw growth and expansion of humanity. The humans of, often revered the mysterious Amatria aliens as, aliens as gods. Unfortunately, the tyrannical Miserath faction soon found their way back to Earth. This threatened the Amatria plan for the peaceful development of humanity. So the Amatria accelerated their influence over humanity and hoped to improve humanity's ability to defend, it, defend itself. Soon, great civilizations rose throughout the world. The peaceful Amatria and the oppressive Miserath waged a new civil war from the shadows. They influenced many empires over the course of history. The Amatria helped the Egyptian Empire rise. This threatened the destructive Miserath, so they supported the rise of the Assyrian Empire in order to wipe out the Egyptians. You guys wanna see what I'm looking at? The Milzarath's lust for power grew th through the addition of the Babylonian Empire. The once hopeful Amatria found themselves losing ground. Babylonian rule wasn't enough to satisfy the vile Milzarath bloodlust. They thought the Medo-Persian Empire could be the civilization to help them gain control of the world and defeat their Amatria foes. The discouraged Amatria were on the verge of defeat. They moved north across the sea to another unique civilization through much patience. The Amatria were able to help Greek and Macedonian tribes grow in strength and subdue all their neighbors. Soon a leader named Alexander rose to power. The Amatria revealed themselves to him and thus began the rapid conquest of Alexander the Great. 
The vicious Mizrath had finally met their match. Before long, the Medo-Persian Empire was defeated and the Mizrath were forced to regroup. The Amatria were glad to see the Macedonian conquest help them regain control. Unfortunately, that conquest was short-lived. The death of Alexander the Great fractured the Macedonian leadership and set the stage for the rise of the Roman Empire. Holy moly, look at that freaking helmet. It's freaking me out. The malicious, malicious Mizrath were able to control the Roman Empire for many centuries. Their support of the Romans nearly wiped out the peace-driven Amatria, but the Amatria wisely learned from their enemies and subservient and subversive subver, subversively worked under the nose of the Mizrath. The Mizrath's ability to retain power faltered. Soon a devastating power struggle consumed the world and humanity was left in a dark age. For the first time, both alien clans were left at a stalemate. I never knew history was so cool. <laughs> you think you married a Miserath? Miser Miserath? I gotta pee. have an alien massage the rise and fall of the kingdoms oh I gotta pee the efforts made by both alien factions to retain power failed to take root for hundreds of years during that time humanity expanded its reach various governments discovered and colonized many corners of the globe struggles between governments created numerous wars over the course of a thousand years Soon the British Empire was established. Eventually it became the largest empire in history. Its vast size meant the friendly Amatria and vile Mizrath could secretly operate independently throughout the world. Each faction desperately tried to gain control over the other. The Amatria were highly interested in one particular British colony located in the New World. The enthusiastic Amatria believed this new government aligned best with their beliefs. So the United States of America was born on July 4th, 1776. With the aid of the Amatria, the USA won its independence from the British Empire. This new nation was fragile. Fragile. The wicked Mizrath saw the potential power of the United States and tried to exploit their weakness. They attempted to split the nation and cause the American Civil War. However, when the war was over, the faithful Amatria influence, influence helped the U.S. become an even stronger nation. The noble Amatria had dealt a devastating blow to the heinous, heinous Mizrath. The late 1800s witnessed the end of the American Civil War. The westward expansion of the United States and the exploration of the American frontier as the dangers of lawless territories west of the Mississippi became legendary. The term Wild West was coined. Mining created great opportunities for exploration. Precious metals such as gold, silver, and copper were discovered. Small plots of land became boom towns as settlers became came from far and wide to seek fortune. In fact, many wandered, wondered what other mysteries could be uncovered deep beneath the ground. Fun fact, established in 1877, Tombstone, Arizona to our south was one of the fastest growing boom towns in the West, in the Old West the site of a silver mining operation. Its population ballooned from 100 to as much as 20,000 in the mid 1800s. It is also the site of the famous Wyatt Earp gunfight at the OK Corral. Conspiracy, legend has it that in the 1890s, 
A mysterious creature was unearthed deep within a copper mine of southern Arizona. The discovery was so mysterious and controversial that the facts were hidden from the public. What was it? Why hide such an important find? What if it revealed evidence that aliens lived among us? In the mid-1800s, this buckboard wagon, what if this wagon was used to tra transport the thing? Eighteen fifty six horse drawn single seat buggy. What if this buggy was used by generals and officers during the Civil War? I want one. Ooh, look at that tree. Eighteen forty nine RV. Covered wagons like this were used to conquer the western United States. What if you had to take this across the country on your next road trip? Bet it would be faster than my bus. <laughs> 1850s horse-drawn double seat buggy. This buggy would have been considered high class back in the Old West. What if this was used by the mayor of Tombstone, Arizona? Those phones always look like Simpsons. The world gets smaller. The dawn of the 20th century saw the end of the Wild West. The oil business exploded, putting the gold, silver, and copper rushes of the 1800s to shame. New inventions led to faster travel and better communication. The Wright brothers proved that man could fly. Henry Ford revolutionized automobile production and the completion of the, of the transcontinental telephone was line allowed communication across the country the world was getting smaller and the u.s was growing in wealth and influence throughout the world conspiracy theory who or what inspired these technolo technological advances and why was the usa able to come so far in such a short amount of time what if the mysterious amatria faction was the reason for such a rapid advance in technology look at this car it looks like Santa's sleigh. Lucky number 13 here could really fly with a top speed of 45 miles an hour. Whoa, look at that truck. Oh my God, you guys, I have to pee so bad. World War I, the war to end all wars. Though the turn of the century brought many wonderful opportunities, it also ushered in terrible conflict. After their devastating defeat during the Civil War of the United States, the heinous Miserath faction turned their attention back to Europe. They were successfully started to regain their power. World War I started July 28, 1914, and ended November 11, 19. 18 1914 and ended 1918 the peaceful amatria did their best to prevent the war although they were although they were successful in aiding an allied victory it was at the terrible cost it was at a terrible cost by the end of the war four of the world's empires ceased to exist and over 16 million people died holy crap although it was supposed to be the war war to end all wars that was not the case another global war was just over the horizon the evil it and miserath were hard to work manipulate hard at work manipulating future events fun fact bolin travel center's founder claude m bolin served the u.s navy during oh my gosh you guys i have to come back to this because i'm gonna have to go pee I wonder if they have a bathroom in this part. Cause I don't want to end my my 
my trip through. Ooh, that's cool. I gotta show you guys everything. But I have to pee. Oh my gosh. 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 I had to pee so bad. I almost waited too long. Hold on a sec. Hey, I'm not done with the tour yet, but I have to pee really bad. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you guys think so far? So I think after doing this, I'm going to have to read uh, the Easter story in the Bible because it's Easter Sunday and we might as well cover all the bases for the day. Plus the dogs probably want to get out. I look tired. I didn't sleep very well last night. I parked on a hill. <laughs> and it's hard to sleep when the bed is crooked, to be honest. No, I agree. Like, it would make sense that they used dinosaurs to move all that stuff. But I mean, also, with advanced technology, weren't we supposed to be able to create things with our minds? That just makes more sense. You know what I mean? before it came to things like this, but I just couldn't pass it up. I don't know if I'll ever come through here again, so I had to go. This is gonna be loud, cover your ears. Apparently I could buy moccasins here, but I could buy moccasins here, but apparently I have dogs and dogs would chew my moccasins. <clears throat> What's that doing there? I gotta go through the whole thing again. That's fine, it's fine. They should put bathrooms in here. Oh, there goes the pterodactyl again. Ah! 
I wonder if that's how tall you guys really were. You guys have big heads. This is probably true. All of it's probably true. All of it. Look how big that is. That doesn't scare you. Like, I know it's fake, but like, even like being close to its mouth, I'm like, holy cow, like that, like gives me a sense of fear. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go back to where we were we went through all this history already <clears throat> whoa this thing's actually leaking gas look at that It's real. All right. So going back. The Great Depression. Man, they got a better kitchen than I did in my situation. Like, this looks depressing. I could see that being depressing during a Great Depression. But this doesn't look so bad. They look like they had it made. They're just camping. Nomads for life, yo. Look at this ancient lean-to. Florence Thompson with her children in a lean-to tent shelter in Napoma, California, 1936. Farmer and sons walking in the face of a dust storm. Dust storm. Look at their little hut. Kind of cool. World War II, the pawns are in place. 21 years after World War I, the wicked Miserath, Miserath finalized their plan for humanity to wipe each other out. By 1933, the Nazi party took control of the German government. Ow. A madman named Hitler declared himself Führer, leader. The pawns were in place and the world was primed to explode into war a second time. The Second World War began September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. Soon Britain and France had declared war on Germany. Once De on December 7th, 1941, Japan bombed the U.S. naval bases at Pearl Harbor. Hawaii, pushing the U.S. into the war. War saturated the globe and virtually no country was safe from destruction. The protective, the protective Amatria stepped into the help, stepped in to help the human race. They offered to share their scientific knowledge and advanced technology if the allied nations would erase all evidence of any alien existence. War makes me sad. 
I don't like it at all. Yeah, I really liked the aliens and dinosaurs graphs of how they like did mind of how they mind control stuff. The fight for humanity continues. Turning the tide, the top secret agreement with the Amatria helped turn the tide of the war. Backed by the might and manpower of the United States, the Allies received the military support they needed across the world. A desperate act, Adolf Hitler and his Axis powers became desperate for a strategy to win the war. The evil Miserath, Milzerath, revealed to Hitler that an ancient alien artifact was discovered in America. This artifact could be the key to enslaving the world and winning the war. Hitler immediately devised a plan to steal the artifact. A Japanese spy imprisoned at a camp near Dragoon, Arizona, that's where I am aided the Nazis in finding the ancient artifact. In a covert mission, Nazi spies found the artifact and promptly smuggled it to Germany. But by then it was too late. The Nazis were losing the war. The deceptive Miserath decided Hitler was too insane to control and they turned their back on him. A daring mission under the direction of the Winston Churchill, the Allied leadership learned the covert operation led by the Nazi spies in America. They met with the Amatria in an undisclosed location to verify the rumors of this ancient artifact. The U.S. did admit that it had found the artifact in Arizona during a mining excavation in the late 1890s. Conspiracy? No one knows what really happened to the artifact, that it was that was recovered. In fact, if... Hmm. In fact, if you were to ask anyone about it, they would deny it even happened. So what was the mysterious object? What if this ancient secret was the key to everlasting knowledge? Most of the information was thought to be destroyed. However, the Allies discovered that the Nazis kept the mysterious artifact at Eagle's Nest. As the Nazis retreated from every major front, the Allies executed their plan. General Eisenhower ordered the 101st Airborne to be the first American personnel to the site. They successfully accomplished their missions and retrieved the ancient alien artifact. Fun fact, Claude Boland's oldest son, Claude Jr., retired as a major in the United States Army Air Corps after the end of World War II. He flew in 36 missions over Germany and France and he first piloted the B-17 Flying Fortress, then later the B-24 Liberator. On one mission over France, his plane was shot down. Claude and all of his crew were rescued by the French resistance and smuggled back to Britain where they resumed their flying duties. What if aliens have manipulated our entire history? What if humans descended from ancient cosmic beings? Ooh, you almost scared me, dude. What if this 1937 Rolls Royce was really used by Winston Churchill? The devastating truth? World War II affected approximately 39 countries. By the end of the war, over 70 million people perished between military and civilian deaths. World War II lasted six years and was by far the bloodiest and most destructive conflict in all of his human history. Gross.
the Allied victory, the world, the war in Europe came in, came to an end in May of 1945. This evil Miserath desperately tried to hold on to power. In the last ditch effort, they poured their remaining resources into the Japanese Empire. That final gamble failed just as a few, just a few months later. The history books will tell you that the U.S. perfected nuclear war through the top secret Manhattan Project. What if it was the Amatria who helped the U.S. develop the technology? The Amatria warned of the dangers of such power. However, with all the devastation brought to the world and the criminal Miserath still supporting the Japanese Empire, a terrifying decision had to be made. U.S. President Harry Truman decided to weld that power. In early August of 1945, the U.S. destroyed two Japanese cities with nuclear bombs. Upon Japan's surrender on August 15, 1945, World War II was finally over. Was, was the ages-long proxy war finally over between the evil Miserath and the vigilant Amatria? Let's find out. What if aliens secretly control our minds? Not mine. I have an invisible foil foil helmet I wear. <laughs> I heard the nose was knocked off the Great Sphinx because if it wasn't, you'd be able to tell that it was after um, a black man. Makes sense to me. Conspiracies, cover ups, and concealment. True to their agreement with the Amatria, the Allied leadership from World War II destroyed all evidence related to the existence of aliens. You will not find anything but conspiracy theories and rumors today. This section is dedicated to those conspiracies. Since the late 1940s, our culture has been obsessed with the notion of life beyond our planet. From the seven wonders of the ancient world to the entertainment we enjoy every day, every night. What if our books, TV programs, websites, and technology come from an outside influence? The human race seems to think we know everything, but even the most intelligent scientists make new discoveries every day. How could so many people across the globe invent these ideas without some shred of truth leaking out? How could these ideas proliferate our culture so completely? How can man come up with so many technological advancements in such a short time? What if? These mysterious beings are controlling our minds just as they did with the dinosaurs. Will the truth ever be revealed? What if aliens make themselves known one day? And if they do, what will happen? Let's start at the beginning. I want to show you these. The Great Sphinx of Giza. And the pyramids of Giza. What's at the top there? Map of Atlantis. I want to go there. The Atlantis architecture. The all seeing eye of the Illuminati. El, El Chupacabra. Sasquatch. Ruler of the Incan Empire. The Loch Ness Monster. Easter Island. I didn't know that was alien-eyed. Alien, alien-fied. I don't know how to say that. Bermuda Triangle. Whoa, there it is.
Stonehenge. The Aurora Borealis. The Hartford Higher. Is that a crop circle? Oh, it is a crop circle. War of the Worlds. Area 51. Cool, I want to get closer. I wish they'd let me go there. Terrorist attack. The World Trade Center burn after two hijacked planes slam into the towers on September 11, 2001. That's what they looked like before they fell down. someone that looks like that. Are they saying that Elvis Presley was an alien? Scars from abductees. It's not what mine looked like. They didn't leave any scars, but they left an implant. I had it removed when I was like eight or nine. No joke. Whoa, the Challenger disaster looks like a freaking flamingo. Weird. Weird. The flat earth theory also looks like a freaking flamingo. What is happening there? Huh. What if Elvis was actually abducted? by aliens. That would make sense why he's up there. And what if the Apollo moon mission found an alien spaceship? Mysteries of the desert. Many rumors have shrouded the thing. What if the story you just encountered was true? A story of aliens fighting dinosaurs, a battle that manipulated the course of human history. What if the thing is the last remnant of prehistoric cave dwellers? What if it was the mysterious cargo that resulted in the sinking of the Louis Lusitania? What if it was the ancient alien artifact recovered through a daring mission in World War II? What if it is the missing link between humans and aliens from the other side of the galaxy. What if the best way to hide the truth is in plain sight? At an obscure roadside stop in Arizona, now prepare to be amazed as you discover the mystery of the desert. Fun fact, Binkley Prince acquired the thing around 1950, although the details of how are still shrouded in secrecy. In 1965, he built the thing roadside attraction right here. Mr. Prince ran the story with his wife until his death in 1969 at just 56 years of age. Upon his death, Claude Bolin Jr. struck a deal with Mr. Prince's wife, Janet, to take over the store's operation. 
Bolin Travel Centers Incorporated as maintained by the mystery has been maintained by the mystery ever since. My third tour. Here lies the thing. What is it? That question has bewildered us for over 50 years. Some, some have had their theories. It was suggested an ancient curse was placed upon it and, a dire, and dire consequences awaited those who touched it. I wanna touch it. Can I touch it? Or could it be part of a larger government scandal to cover up a secret so terrifying it could cause mass hysteria? What if this is the ancient artifact discovered deep within the copper mines of Arizona? This display represents what the setting may have looked like when it was discovered. Of course, no one may ever know. So we are still left to wonder, what is this mystery of the desert? The thing. They covered its genitals. I was super curious. No, it's... Okay, so I started seeing signs for the thing as I'm driving through Arizona, right? And I was like, I'm gonna get off and see what the thing is. And apparently I just showed you what the thing is. And it's only $5. It's only $5 for this museum trip. You should definitely come, definitely. Watch where you're pointing at, thing, man. Thank you.
that was fun. I gotta go let the dogs out real quick and then possibly come back in. Yeah, I have a blanket that matches that perfectly. I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. I gotta go eat some carrots and hummus, I think. After I let the dogs out. And then here in a minute, after going through that museum, I probably get to read the story in the Bible that has to do with today. So that we could get a well-rounded, like, story time. I wouldn't want to leave that out. You know what I mean? Sunday thing was supposed to be out be about after all so we got Colorado Louisiana Nebraska I don't know if you caught that but we had Colorado Nebraska Louisiana here we got Indiana and we got a Washington and an Oregon everybody's from everywhere look what I did in the front of the bus Wow, I cannot believe how hungry I am. I'm super hungry. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's not hot in here at all. Excellent. I'm really, 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 ah, oh, really hungry. Hold on a sec. How's everybody Easter going? Wonder what that guy's eating over there. Monique, you were out here at the thing? It's neat, isn't it? I'm not answering that, Rev King. Hi, Bruce Wayne. Happy Texas. Wish I was there. I got things to do. What 
you getting in that for? What's the matter? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's the matter? What do you want me to say, Jade? I just talked to you guys for like over an hour straight. Now I gotta eat a carrot. Puppy? Let's give the dog some water. I gotta plug my phone in before it dies. Thanks, Jane Door. came off the top so now I gotta like clean it again because it let everything that I had hanging up there fall you don't have to repeat it Jordan Stop being annoying. Hide user from my channel so all of their messages get deleted. There we go. Oh my gosh, I love the movie flushed away. Eldorado Hot Springs in Tonopah? I already passed Tonopah. I'm going towards Texas. Hi, Zoe. All eight of my doggos. I'm at the Thing Museum. My objective, well right now, I'm gonna feed the dogs. And then, or not feed the dogs, I already fed them. But I need to eat and 
Taco Bell messed up on my burrito twice last night, so I got two free burritos. Oh crap, my shoe's stuck. So I'm gonna eat one of those right now. And then I'll let the dogs out here in a little bit. keeping the chunker because I don't want to see him end up in a um in a shelter somewhere and because he's a pit bull if someone doesn't pay a thousand dollars for him I won't trust that they're going to watch after him so and I doubt anyone's gonna pay a thousand dollars for him so it looks like I'll probably end up keeping it, honestly. Plus, he's a really good dog. He listens. He's actually a really good dog. It's annoying, dude. I really do not need you yipping in my ear like that. No, I just left Tucson. I'm trying to get towards Texas. Back up. Let other people drink stuff. Let Uncle Rubio have something to drink before you guys shove him out of the way. Hey! Everybody back up! I am done with the yelling and I'm done with the screaming and if I have to get to this point, we're all done. I will put you in the kennel. Rufio, knock it off. I'm serious about my freaking peace. Stop, you guys. Your belly is bulging. You don't need to drink that much. Plus, you'll end up peeing in my bus. Knock it off. Go. Go. Go on. I'm not sure if you know this about me. But I can be an, an asshole. And I didn't know that about myself until I got eight dogs. Back up, dude. Your stomach is seriously bulging. Go on. Don't look all like that. You just drank the rest of it, and now none of the other puppies have any. What is your problem? You see your mom downing all the water, the whole liter of water, and you think that's what you got to do? Sorry, Viv, I'm not putting more water in there right now. It's true. 
I don't mean to be like this sometimes. It used to actually cause me anxiety to have to get upset before they listened to me. But I'm beyond that now. I'm used to it. I don't mind it anymore. But it used to pretty much upset me anytime I got upset. Like it upset me that I was upset. And so I stopped that cycle. Nip that shit in the bud. Zoe, we get it. If you don't like the way I'm yelling at my dogs, then get off my channel. We're over it. The live was about the museum. You missed it. Bean burrito. I got really hungry, so I decided to eat it. I will be soon though I do put music on plus I have my drumsticks right here so I like drum on my bus when I get bored I actually just got these these are really nice and they were only 12 bucks No, it's a bean burrito. Mm, I sold a window decal yesterday for 150. Not that you guys need to know that, but I make art and people like it and then they buy it from me and that's how I survive. And then I returned a lot of stuff to Walmart. So I was like, man, I need gas money more than I need two skeins of yarn and this dog nail trimmer. So I returned it. Palms, what has that going for you? NJ, I just don't care. I skip over comments like that. I don't know, Sammy. <laughs> but I've learned to ignore them. Fuck yeah, I return stuff. If I don't use it. Lisa Mwah. Sanjay if you were listening to anything I just said I did answer your question 
Scroll back if you have to. I'm not repeating myself. I don't actually know anything about slabs anymore. Other than I hope it the best. I got shit to do out here in the world. I'm going to go do it. All is forgiven. I'm moving on. I'm only getting married for love, bro. Joey, why don't you get a bus? Come out here and figure it out. My go-to spot is out in the middle of the desert. So my dogs can be free. I'll check out the Deming Flea Market. Sounds pretty cool. No, Zoe, I'm not. I'm on the adventure of a lifetime. I just met this crew from Dr. Bronner's who were going to uh, watch the um, solar eclipse and they're gonna spray, like, like they're gonna do like a foam party. Because I was like, what are you doing with that big of tubs of Dr. Bronner's? And then they handed me three bottles of Bronner's. Two of them. I needed the lavender. So thank you. I am driving a spaceship. Mark Light, you miss when I moon the sun rising? You know what? So do I. I freaking love doing that so much. I need to get like a whole bunch of people that are willing to like show their buttholes to the sun as it's rising. I use Bronner's to wash things in the bus and wash my clothes. You just have to use vinegar afterwards to break up the oil. And then once the oil's broken up, it's pretty much like perfect. We get off the bus constantly. Hi, Taiko and Dog Girl forever.
Frida. Oh, Jane. No, thank you. <laughs> It's really windy out there. I wonder if it's going to storm tonight. Pucky tattoos just start praying. <clears throat> They'll grow out. I think this one was the one that was cut off by a cop. Or was it something else? No, I don't wear makeup. No, thank you, Kay. I know I'm loved very, very, very much. Jesus loves you back. I'll watch the eclipse wherever I am. It may not be in totality, but that's fine. Um, it just started to grow out of my head and I tried brushing it out, which just kept breaking it off. My hair should actually be down to like my knees, <clears throat> but it's been cut by fire because I've hung out at fire like pits a lot. And so it's been cut by fire and it broke off when I was trying to brush it out. So I just leave it alone now. Like literally just leave it alone. I don't twist it. Like I don't back comb it, I don't do anything. So it like, it's loose near my scalp, but then it starts locking up the further away from my scalp it gets. I literally don't do anything to it. Except sometimes I add these in there. Uh, I've been wearing it in a ponytail a lot, so I have to take my locks and just rip them apart. I do that sometimes. Say my name, say my name. If no one is around you, say Sophie, I love you. If you ain't running game, say my name, say my name. I saw that one show, what's it called? With Jim Carrey and the animals, animal pet detective or whatever. And I remember turning to my dad and being all like, I'm gonna marry that guy someday, daddy. And he was like, okay, Sarah, where are you, Jim Carrey? Come through. <laughs> hey, don't chew that. Don't you know? Sister! Sister! You guys want to see Biba? 
This is my lady. This is my lady. I love her. <coughs> Apparently, she's busy. That's a plant. That's my guava tree, and I am a person. I don't know if that's true. Look, my dogs cut my chin. They got excited and scratched me. Thank you, Jade Door. My sign. So I was talking to somebody who was deaf and this is an S. And so this is how you say my name. You do it in the shape of a heart around your heart. That's Sarah. That's how I made my name. I'm not choosing sides. You can't make me, asshole. Yay! He's Ventura! I love the part where he's wearing a tote toe and he's like, woo! <laughs> live in a bus but I'm gonna live in a mansion someday that my beautiful husband's gonna make for me I know it should I eat this second one maybe half of it I met someone yesterday who has five dogs and he lives in a truck and not a bus. I was like, whoa, dude. And then I took a picture of him because he was amazing. Everything fell because the bar broke. So everything I had hanging up over there, I'm like, I don't want to show it to you right now. I got to clean it first. Of course I want, yeah, send it to my PayPal. What's Q? I have to know what Q represents and I can give you that. I have money because I sold to Mark. Do I want more? Sure. I don't know the last time I took a shower. But I don't smell, so it's fine. It's probably because I don't eat meat very often. If you don't eat meat or cheese or dairy or sugar too much, you usually don't smell like anything.
down to the bottom. I'm eating a bean burrito. That's 2021. It's my CB radio. I'm in Arizona. This is live. I don't know how to make a super chat. Send it to my PayPal, she banger, or PayPal the do artist, or Cash App, she bangerang if you want. It really does help, seriously. I do have a job. I make art. I take care of puppies. I drive a bus and I do YouTube. fell on the floor. I'm full. My tummy is a little bloated now. Did you guys like it? It was good. <laughs> Last time I came here, he was just a little kid. He don't remember coming here. No. Oh. This is my son. We're parked next to you in these two trucks. Cool. You are like father son truck drivers. Yeah, yeah. That's cool because then you can get out and have lunch together and stuff. Well, he's got his own truck where you know we can sit there and talk on the CB back and forth. What what channel are you on? I got a CB right here. I came to see what the thing was. It's only worked once. <laughs> only a 20 gallon. Only a 20 gallon. Oh yeah? Yeah. But I just, I just filled it, so. Holy moly, that wind! I'll check you out on Channel 19! <laughs> she bangerang! She bangerang! Yeah, the same thing on the bus. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My door opened. They're gonna get on their CB radio, so I gotta get on my CB radio and get to channel 19.
see Bang Rag in the house. Ew. Anybody out there? Let's go, let's go. Ow I just turned it on. Hey, you're coming in loud and clear. Loving that. <laughs> Can you repeat yourself? I didn't hear that. You said that was pretty cool. You got a CB in there. Oh, thanks. It's so I can listen to the cops and the truckers talk shit about me. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Are you guys going to subscribe to the YouTube channel? Oh, you have a YouTube channel? Heck yeah, I'm actually on a live feed right now. You copy that, Kyle? A live feed, how cool. Yeah, it's gonna be She Bangarang on YouTube. She Bangarang. Well, yeah, you got to meet us just diving on through here, you know? Oh, Sarah. You guys are really awesome. I hope you have a fantastic Easter and I hope your journeys are totally safe and I hope you see all the cool shit you can. Same to you. He said he's got something. Oh, I didn't actually hear what you said because as soon as you said what, I, what you said, it went, oh! Shepherds, one English Shepherd and one Pit Bull, and they're going to be 10 weeks old tomorrow. Well, you got you a house full, don't you? Eight dogs and a cat. <laughs> I heard that. I honestly do not know how we do it. Like, we always have food, we always have diesel. I really, I have no idea how we do it. my hope and faith and trust in like something extremely greater than myself as well. Well that's a nice sign. See ya. Have a good one man. Yeah you too. turn this off and go back inside and use the bathroom. It was nice meeting y'all. Right, you take care now. <laughs> we just had a horn honking competition just now. <laughs> that was fun. Oh my gosh, that was fun. <laughs> I'm drooling. <laughs> Ow, my hernia. Mm. But I really do have to use the bathroom. Should I get off this live feed now? It's been 121 minutes, 122 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to get off this live feed. I'll come back and do the Jesus story when I get back. Love you all. Bye. See you later. I forgot how to 
turn it off. 